Are you scared or unsure about doing genetic testing because of how confusing the tests and terminology sound? Nipped? Sips? Ips? Then this video is for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Belly Blossom. On this channel, I help first time moms on their journey into motherhood. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing and join this growing community of mothers-to-be. In this video, I'm going to explain five genetic tests you can have in pregnancy. With so many options out there, it can be so confusing for first-time mothers. I am going to help you understand what these tests are, how they're done, along with some advantages and disadvantages. Let's get into it. Screening uses specific tests to figure out the probability that your pregnancy could have a specific condition. Some of these conditions can include chromosomal or genetic syndromes, heart, brain, or spinal cord defects, or other physical abnormalities. These five groups of preliminary tests use either blood or ultrasound technology. So let me tell you a bit about each. Test number one. Quadruple screen. Just as it sounds, the quad screen tests for four different proteins in the blood. Blood is drawn at the lab and sent away for analysis. This test is done in the second trimester, usually between weeks 15 and 20. These tests are used to detect the likelihood of certain conditions such as Down syndrome, a condition causing growth, developmental and intellectual delays, Edwards syndrome, a condition affecting main organs that is often incompatible with life, spina bifida, a malformation of the spinal cord and bones, and anencephaly, an underdeveloped brain and skull. So now let's break the quad screen down to understand it better. The first thing that it tests for is a protein made by the baby called alpha fetal protein. This is a big word, so I'll make it easy for you to understand. Essentially, there should be a very specific amount of this protein in the blood directly related to your baby's age. Too much or too little will indicate something is wrong. The second protein it's testing for is HCG, or human chorionic gonadotrophin. This is the same thing that pregnancy tests detect. HCG is released by the placenta, which is the tissue that links the baby to the mother. It gives doctors an indication on how baby is developing. The next protein it's testing is also a hormone called estriol. It is produced by the placenta as well as the baby's liver. Again, this is an indication of your baby's growth. The fourth and final test for protein in the quad screen is inhibin A, also a hormone Inhibin A is released by the placenta and is directly linked to the indication of Down syndrome. An advantage of the quad screen is that it only takes about 5 to 10 seconds to draw the blood that is needed and only a few days to get the results. Adversely, a disadvantage would be that it only has a 75% detection rate, leaving 25% of pregnancies that are missed being detected. Number two, serum integrated prenatal screen or SIPS is a combination of two tests, one done in the first trimester and one in the second trimester. At 12 weeks of pregnancy, the PAPPA blood analysis is drawn, also known as the pregnancy associated plasma protein A. Wow. <laughs> this protein is released by the placenta and lower than normal levels can indicate Down syndrome. In the second trimester, the quad screen will be done, increasing detection rates to 80%. A strong disadvantage is that you cannot find out the results until both tests have been completed. Number three, integrated prenatal screen, or IPS, includes the previous two tests, in addition to nuchal translucency. Nuchal translucency is done by ultrasound between the 11th and 14th week of pregnancy. It is a very specific measurement of fluid underneath the skin at the back of the baby's neck. If the measurement is higher than what is expected, 
It can be an early indication of Down syndrome. A disadvantage is you do have to wait again until the quad screen is collected in the second trimester, until results are delivered to you and your doc. This could make a difference on how your pregnancy is managed. Having to wait weeks for results can create anxiety and uncertainty in women. But positively, now the detection rate is up to 90%. Number four, first trimester screening. Many people are confused about the terminology, thinking all of these are called first trimester screening. But that is not true. First trimester screening is a specific group of tests. This test includes blood work, detecting the proteins PAPPA and HCG. It also does the nuchal translucency test that we talked about. It checks for the fetal heart rate, making sure that it is normal. It tests the blood flow through the baby's umbilical vein, called ductus venous flow, and takes a measurement of the baby's nasal bone. Full anatomy is also reviewed for defects. An advantage is that you can get your results right away, usually that very day. These tests will deliver a 96% detection rate, checking for three chromosomal abnormalities, Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and Patu syndrome, a multiple and complex organ defect. Number five, lastly, is the non-invasive prenatal testing or NIPT, N-I-P-T. This is a single blood test that uses specific genetic technology to check for all chromosomal differences including the three I talked about, as well as sex chromosome abnormalities. Advantages include that it can be done as early as 10 weeks, can detect the gender of your baby, and has a 94 to 99% detection rate. Disadvantages is that it is quite an expensive test and results take up to two weeks. I encourage you to look into the pricing of each of these tests that I've discussed in your area before you book your appointment. Pro tip, folic acid has been proven to decrease the likelihood of neural tubal defects. That is the development of the spinal cord and the brain. It happens really early in pregnancy. So make sure if you're not pregnant yet, take folic acid for three months before you do. And if you are pregnant, take it every single day. It's found in your prenatal vitamins and you can also take it separately if you want to. Personally, I decided to go with the first trimester screening because it had a high detection rate and did a detailed scan of my baby's anatomy. It was $500, which I felt was a reasonable price as I received the results that day in full detail from a genetic counselor who answered all of the questions that we had. During the ultrasound, the specialist went through every step, explaining what he was doing and what he had found. It was very special to receive printouts of our little peanut and hear her heartbeat for the first time. I would say it was an experience I will never forget. First time pregnancies come with so many unknowns and prenatal genetic testing can be really scary about all the possibilities that could happen. I remember crying the night before, but I am so happy that I had it done because it gave me the peace of mind that I needed. If something was wrong, we would have time to prepare, access support systems like genetic counseling, and move forward depending on what was best for us and our baby. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next week on The Belly Blossom.